Hey everyone, I want to draw your attention to an important change we made to the script library. It's now called the Yara and Script Library here on the Veeam Community Hub. Now the first thing I did was update the supportability. So I'll draw your attention to that real quick. There's a couple of important things I want to highlight. Um, first of all, this used to just be scripts, so things like PowerShell and the like, but now with the R rules, we're going to put them here as well. And generally speaking, the engines to do the, these things like scripting automation, scanning with the R rules, those are supported. But like, hey, why is my script not working? That type of stuff generally isn't supported. Here's an example of some good language from a KB about PowerShell support. But just keep that in mind, right? We, um, we provide the engines to do it, but what is not in scope is, you know, individual um, troubleshooting of rules and scripts and stuff like that. But that being said, we definitely want this technology used, and I'm going to be providing some featured Yara rules. And we will also have a GitHub repo where a number of the Yara rules will be um, created and evolved and such and then I'm going to hand pick some out put them in this featured Yara rule type of post and it'll be structured the same way featured Yara rule so it'll be easily searchable in the way the community hub works with the related topics you'll see um, you know it, it should start to um, populate the other featured Yara rules all right so in this featured Yara rule there are 10 ransomware actors uh, strains that are some of the top ones that have been seen by our support and our product management team and I've put those Yara rules into a zip file so I'm going to go ahead and download that so which is a good reminder if you yourself are going to contribute some on the community hub zip files a way to go if you're going to like check them in and out and iterate it github the veeam hub is the way to go I'm here just to use it. I, I'm not really the builder, but I can show you how to get them in. So I've downloaded it actually twice. So I'll just keep it simple and have just the one here. So I have this file in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract it. So let's go ahead and extract it. And actually, you know, this is a good question to the viewers. You know, what's the right place to put this? And I, I'm going to put them on my documents just for. Um, example uh, but you know maybe a file share would be the right place or things like that internally for distribution but I'm gonna put it in Yara rules inside of my documents and let's go ahead and select that folder and extract it okay so it's not a big amount of data these Yara rules are really small as you can see here okay so they're on the disk on the file system and for those of you who know me, know how I'm going to put them into where they go. So I'm going to refresh this uh, path here, and I should have that new folder pop up. So there it is. So I like to use the Veeam file engine, the fi fast SCP, to move those files in. So let's select all of those and copy them. And then let's go into the path where the YAR rules sit, which is program files, meme, backup, and replication, and the word, backup, and then Yara rules. So let's go ahead and paste. Okay, so these 10 rules are going to be put on the file system here of the, the Veeam server. They were already on. This is the same system, but just getting them in, and then they'll be available for use. All right, so I have some new Yara rules, fresh Yara rules. So I'm going to take a look at what I have under management by Veeam. This is a relatively new environment. Just built this up. I've got four image-based backups. And the thing about Yara rules is that you kind of have to know what you're looking for, meaning um, maybe my cybersecurity team has told me that XYZ ransomware has been detected somewhere else in the environment. Maybe I really care about these systems. I want to make sure that they don't have that one. Let's scan for a Yara rule. And that's different than the inline malware detection this one here which is part of 12.1 because this is looking for basically everything or everything that we know about that's published um, for us to do these entropy analysis and the file system analysis but a scan is an explicit thing right so let's take this system and then the Yara scan is well not the delete 
but let's do the scan backup. Now that I think about that, probably need to delete farther down. But anyways, um, now there's a lot of text on here, and I, I really encourage you to give it a good look because it's one of those things that there's different logic. And then Help Center, by the way, and I have a link to it in the supportability statement that explains how this all works. But I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to use it in this particular scenario. And, and take that example of my cybersecurity team told me XYZ ransomware was detected somewhere in the organization, right? So if one of these ransomwares was detected, let's see if it is in this image-based backup. So I'm going to drop down the Yara rule, and I'm going to pick the one um, that maybe just an example. In fact, this one, for example, I know... I've talked to support. This is one that they've driven recoveries on, for example. So let's go ahead and select that one. And then what's interesting here is your start date and your end date. Okay, so you got to think about the dates here. The start date by default should be before, right? So let's go with yesterday. And let's, let's, let's go a couple of days, right? And then the end date is today. Right, so the thought here is that I'm going to start and end from and to, right? So that's what you might think it might be, but it's actually the reverse. And what I mean by that is you're kind of scanning backwards. So this is why it takes you some time to kind of go through this. And the thought would be that I'm going to scan from today to the oldest restore point. Now, and why I say this is too many times you might start and say, hey, they it, it, it say you can't start in the past or something like that. So I guess let me give you an example. So the way you might read it is start in the past, go to today, right? It'll say end date can't be earlier than the start date because the start date is the um, start from now and go backwards to the age depth you want to target. And the logic here, let me go ahead and start and you can watch this kick off. The logic here is that there's an assumption that you want to start by identifying the most recent restore points that are clean. Okay, so that's kind of a logic here. Now, if any of you have done a secure restore, the data integration API, the, the mount PowerShell commandlet, staged restore, or some of these other things that, that you might have known about Veeam, Something's going to happen here that's actually really familiar. So I'm launching this scan. I'm going to take this image base back up and look for that ransomware with the Yara rule. But if I go over here, let's see if I can catch it in time. Uh -huh. You'll see this FLR task, basically. And those are the two drives of that image base backup. They're being mounted. And then when I hit the scan here, it's already on to... The, the recovery volume was quick, but now it's already on to the C drive, right? So this Yara rule will progress through the rest of this image-based backup looking for traces of this particular ransomware with the Yara rule. So I hope this is a quick little video that helps you give some thought about this. Again, this is in community, Yara, and script library. And, you know, definitely check these out. If you have rules to share, share them. And then when the GitHub repo is up, I'm going to link to that. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know how you are using Yara rules.